What's going on guys, Tua Cruz here, and today we're gonna be making some big upgrades to my racing gravel slash cyclocross bike. We've got some brand new carbon wheels from Elite Wheels. So these are actually the road edition of the Elite Drive wheel set. I've been using these on my road bike for the last two years putting thousands and thousands of kilometers on my road bike and these wheels have been performing really great. And now that I moved back here to the US, we've got a lot more gravel riding. We're also entering into the cyclocross race season. So I'm doing a lot more riding on this bike. This is the Cannondale Super 6 Evo CX edition. This frame is designed to work both as a racing gravel bike and as a racing cyclocross bike. So I reached out to Elite Wheels to ask them if I could also test out their gravel edition of the Elite Drive wheels. And these new wheels just arrived in the mail, so I'm really excited to test these out. And these wheels are gonna be a huge upgrade to my bike. I'm still riding the stock wheels, which are pretty heavy, and I'm also still riding tubes with my tires. I've got a lot of comments from you guys over the years that I need to upgrade to tubeless. So finally, I'm gonna be doing my very first ever tubeless tire setup. I've got some sealant here from Orange Seal, so really excited to test this out and hopefully it goes smoothly. I've never done this before, but these wheels are set up tubeless ready to go, so I think it should be pretty simple and I'm super stoked about these upgrades. We're already two races into the cyclocross series here in Michigan and I got fourth in the elite race in the first race. I got third in the second race, so I'm slowly climbing the ladder and hopefully these wheels and tubeless setup will be enough to help me push up and maybe even fight for that top spot. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing and the install. So let's go ahead and get these wheels out of the box. This is what the packaging looks like in the inside. Everything looks pretty secure. We got both of our wheels here. And so here's a first look at the front wheel. So first impressions, it reminds me a lot of the road edition of the Elite Drive wheel. The rims are definitely a bit wider. For the external width, we've got 31. And for the internal width, we've got 24. And I really do like the look of the Elite Drive wheels, just the glossy finish and the, you can see the layers of the carbon in the side. It just looks really clean. I also noticed another difference between the Road Edition and the Gravel Edition of these wheels. You can see with the Road Edition here, we've got this style where the spokes are tied in here. And I remember seeing some other engineer style YouTubers talking about how this design was potentially dangerous. If you do experience multiple broken spokes, there's really nothing here that covers and locks these in place. So in normal riding situations, this isn't an issue. And it looks like they have a different design with the gravel edition here where those are actually covered. So there's no chance of that happening, which is nice to see because you do run into more bumpy kind of rough situations on gravel roads with flying rocks everywhere. So it's just nice to have that extra safety feature. Of course, these are also going to be ceramic hubs. And with the spokes, there's two different options. You can get the steel spoke version or you can get the aero bladed carbon spokes. And for me personally, I really like the aero bladed spokes, especially on my road bike, but I decided to play it safe and get the steel spokes for this just because I don't know what kind of surfaces I'm gonna be riding on. And there might be some situations where I'm riding on some really rough surfaces. So I decided to get the steel spokes just to be extra safe. And for the steel spokes, they're using really high quality Sapim CX Ray spokes. With the steel spokes, you do get about a 70 gram weight penalty, but I think that's worth it for the extra durability. If I was focusing more on gravel racing, I might have opted to go with the bladed aero spokes, but I'm focusing more on cyclocross, which sometimes you're riding over rougher surfaces. So I decided to go with the steel spokes just to be on the safe side of things. But let me know down in the comments, your experience with carbon gravel wheels. Do you use the bladed aero spokes for gravel or do you prefer to go with the steel spokes? So let's go ahead and check the weight on these. The other nice thing with these wheels is they are set up tubeless ready already. The inside of the rims are completely sealed so you don't need to install any tape. It also has the tubeless valves already installed. So I'm gonna check the weight on this, but keep in mind you do get a little extra weight just from that tape and from the valve already being installed. So for the front wheel, we got 651 grams. And also here's a look at the rear wheel and rear spoke pattern. One of the other cool things on the rear wheel is we got this purple anodized tub here. I'm pretty sure with most of the Elite wheels, they give you the option to use the standard hub or you can upgrade. They have a couple different order options on the website. And for the weight of the rear wheel, we've got 762 grams. And for both wheels together, we got 1,413 grams. Keep in mind that is including the tape on the rims as well as the valves. And for the cassette, I just bought the same cassette that was the stock one on the bike, 1136 SRAM cassette. I still want to keep the stock wheels as a backup, so I figured I'd keep everything the same. Okay. 
And the same thing with the rotor. I'm just gonna be using the same stock one that was on the bike. This is a SRAM CLX R. It comes with 140 in the rear and 160 in the front. I may change that in the future to have 140 both in the front and rear, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it the same. One thing I am gonna change though, is I did have to buy some lock rings. So I got some gold anodized ones here from Wolf Tooth. So yeah, it was the same price for the black lock ring as it was for the gold one. Figured I'd get some bling, even though you probably can't see it when it's on the bike. Same thing for the front wheel. We got 160s instead of 140s though. All right, so up until now, that was the easy part. Now we're going into uncharted territory. This is my first ever time installing some tubeless tires. And for the tires, I'm just using, again, the stock tires that were on the bike. So these are Vittoria Torino Mix tubeless ready graphene 2.0 700 by 33s. Pretty decent kind of all round tread pattern on these and they've been doing really good on the races so far. So first let's make sure we got the right direction and line up the valve stem with the tire logo. I'm really crossing my fingers that this will go <laughs> smoothly. And wow, these are already pretty tight just for the first side. <sighs> And from what I've researched, there's two different ways to do tubeless installs. The one step is you pour the sealant right into the tire right now at this step. But the other method, the easier method, is to use a syringe like this. And the nice thing about the orange seal sealants is they come with a syringe like this. So you can just pour it in after you get the tire seated. And it's a lot less messy that way. So that's what we're going to be doing. First, let's, get the, let's try and get the other side of the tire on. All right, tires on. Well, I was hoping to be able to ride these wheels today, but it looks like a storm's rolling in right now, getting crazy outside, but. All right, we got the tires on, air compressor. Let's see if we can get these tires to fit. Okay, <laughs> wow, that was actually way easier than I was expecting. Maybe I got lucky with my first time. I did use this little Presta to Schrader adapter here so I could use the air compressor, but yeah, that tire seems to be holding pressure. So we still need to put the sealant in here, but I'm gonna get the other wheel ready. Then we can do both at the same time. All right, that second tire <laughs> was a little tougher to get on. Let's see if we have the same luck with seating this tire. All right, we're two for two. I'm actually feeling, I don't know if I'm feeling lucky or unlucky today because this was a little bit easier than I was expecting. Even though it's kind of storming and raining outside, we're just gonna push through and finish this install. So the next part we gotta do is get the sealant inside the tires. We can undo the valve stem here. And again, this is my first ever time doing this. First time doing tubeless, so. The other nice thing about these wheels is the valves that they came with, came with these caps that have the valve core removal option. So uh, first, let's let, let's let the air out of the tire and we can take out the valve core. And one of the reasons I chose to go with orange seal is because it comes with this syringe here. So you can put this in directly right away. And I wasn't sure how much sealant to put in there. It says for 700C tires, you wanna put between one and two ounces in. And since this is some thicker 700 tires, we got the 33s for cyclocross. I figure I'm gonna go on the higher end of that spectrum, so two ounces. This bottle is eight ounces total, so we're gonna do a quarter of this bottle in there. And can't forget to shake before we put it in. So we're just gonna push this over the valve. Hopefully that's good enough. And okay, yeah, this is going in really easy. Only tricky part is making sure we put the right amount in there. All right, so I just put the valve stem back in, pump the tires up, and I put it up to the max tire pressure just to hopefully spread that tire sealant around. I do think I put 
a little bit too much of that sealant in. I put in closer to half than a quarter. It was kind of hard to see because it was bubbling up when I was putting it in. So I tried getting as much out as I could, but eh, it was a little bit of a challenge, but I figure hopefully it won't hurt too much to have a little extra. So yeah, we definitely got a little bit too much sealant in here, but eh, hopefully not a problem. So just spinning things around, trying to get the sealant to spread around. But I don't hear any leaking sounds. I didn't have any sealant come out of the sides of the tires like other videos mentions. So it seems like this was a pretty smooth install so far. We still got one more wheel to go. Luckily that was with the rear wheel though. So if I'm gonna have extra sealant in the tire, I'd rather it be in the rear wheel. We're not gonna make the same mistake with the front wheel though. It is still kind of hard to tell how much has gone in when it gets cloudy after you shake it. So probably a good idea to have a separate bottle and measure it before you put it in. That way you can just get the exact amount in. All right, I think that's about half of that. So about a quarter of the bottle. It's not sounding as liquidy as the last wheel. So I think I definitely put too much in on the first wheel, but that's okay. Lesson learned on the first attempt. I'm really not sure how long I'm supposed to do this. So I'm just gonna do a little bit extra just to be safe. I did see a lot of people recommend that you take this out for a ride right away after getting it ready. That was my original plan until the rain came and it looks like the rain stopped now, but everything's kind of wet outside. I'd rather not get these wheels all nasty on the very first ride. So I think I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to take these out. So just gonna shake it a little extra now just to be safe. All right, so thankfully everything seems to have gone smoothly so far. We've got the wheels ready to go. And now it's time to see how big of an upgrade these wheels are going to make. The carbon wheels, the tubeless setup. So first I'm gonna weigh my bike with its current race setup. So this is how I've been racing the bike. Uh, I just don't have my computer mount on there, but I've been racing with the bottle cages for now. I probably should take at least one of the bottle cages off, but I still use it for training rides and it's still kind of warm. So I'm leaving these on for right now. I'm gonna weigh it with these current wheels and then I'm gonna swap over the other wheels and weigh it again and we'll see how much of a weight savings that we're gonna get. And this is with pedals and everything too. I've got the power meter pedals on here. There's still a little bit of grass and dirt on the tire. So we've got about 19.35 pounds, 8.78 kilograms. All right, wheels are on. Let's check the new weight. Oh yeah. So we're down to 18.18 pounds. We lost over a pound from changing the wheels, changing the tubeless. And I think this should actually be even a little bit lower because I put way too much sealant in the rear wheel. So that is great to see a whole pound drop. Let's see in kilograms what we got. So in kilograms, we're now at 8.25 kilograms. That is awesome. And the weight savings alone is gonna be a huge upgrade, especially with the wheels. That's exactly where you want to lower the weight on your bike with the rotational mass. But the other big upgrade is going to be the tubeless setup. I'm gonna be able to ride some lower tire pressures and corner better in all the cyclocross races. So I'm really excited to test this out, but this video is getting a little bit long here. So I think I'm gonna save my test ride with the initial tubeless setup for the next upcoming video. And I'll show you guys my secret practice cyclocross course. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's take a quick look at the bike with these wheels. This is just looking sick, looking way better than it did with the stock wheels. I love my carbon deep dish wheels and this is just looking awesome. Another area we can save some weight. We got these caps here on the wheels, but I think I might leave those on there just because it has the valve core removal tool in case I need it during a training ride. But we can take those off during the races for some extra weight loss. Let's do the hub sound test. Oh yeah. I'm also happy to not hear any brake rub. It's great. I don't have to make any adjustments to the brakes. Let's also test the front wheel. And that's silent, that's perfect. Don't have to do any brake adjustments. This thing is ready to ride, but man, this is looking sick. I mean, compared to the original wheels on there, these stock heavy, these things just feel like a tank when I pick them up. And I definitely noticed a huge difference just taking the old wheels off, putting these new ones on. So much lighter, look so much better. And yeah, they're gonna sound better too. But before we finish up, I wanna say again, a big thank you to Elite Wheels for sending these wheels over for me to test out and use in the upcoming cyclocross race season. I'm gonna be using these in all my cyclocross races moving forward, really testing them out, pushing them to the limit. 
And in case you're interested in getting any wheels for yourself, you can get 15% off using my code down below. So I'll have a link to their website to the specific model that I'm using and you can get that 15% discount. I'll also leave some links to the other materials that we use. So for the sealant, we use the orange seal sealant and I'm gonna be testing this out over the next few weeks with my training, with my racing, and we'll see how this all is performing. Really excited to test it out. I'm gonna wait till it gets a little bit drier outside. But anyway, that's it for today's video. I'm gonna put a nice little video montage here of the upcoming video when we take this out on the test ride. So a little preview of the upcoming video. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you next time here on Tuo Cruise.